Okay, guys, well, welcome to our group. I'm super stoked. If you have a noisy background, maybe mute your line just to make life a little bit easier, but feel free to unmute. I'm just gonna mute, mute, mute. Uh, I'm just gonna mute um, Lynn Smith, maybe you can go through and like- Not now. Yeah, somebody does. Okay, I think we're good. Someone just had the TV on. It's always embarrassing when you have that you don't think you have to put on and you know you're talking away or yeah, parenting your kids or something. All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Erin. For those who don't know me, and I'm out on Vancouver Island in BC. We're having the best fall. I don't know about you guys. I know droughts are drought thing, but man, it's pretty sweet out here. I hope you're having amazing weather. Um, no, I see Kelly saying no, but you know what? I hope you are. So put in the chat, you know, where you're from and who's excited? Like, let's just do a little wave. Who's excited to get rid of some of this negative energy that I think we've been blaming COVID on, but that was like two years ago, I think. So I think it's like saying, well, I put weight on because of my kids. And then you realize they're like 20. So no more excuses. <laughs> There's the stages of change, right? There's like contemplation and pre-contemplation. So how many of you have been thinking about, thinking about getting ready to make a change? That's kind of like pre-contemplation. Like I should probably do this. That's what I was thinking in like April or May before summer hit. And then I was like, that doesn't seem like a great idea in the summer. And then, so now I'm full on, like today I was at the gym. I put on my music instead of listening to a podcast while I lifted weights, I was like, man, like I am all in. So put in the chat, like how motivated are you on a scale of one to 10 to like make a really big change and like just change up everything. Like reset on your, your diet, reset on your energy, reset on your mindset. Like I'm super ready for this. And I know so many of you are. Yeah. Um, and if we come together, I think we're going to do a great job of it together. So today on this call, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to hear a really inspiring story and I want to do stories every week. So if you want to share your story, reach out to me. Mm. We're going to do a story um, every week. Um, but at the end of this call, I'm going to give you guys my very best manifesting um, tool. Some of you have experienced it before, but I'm going to take you through a, just a 10 minute process. It's just going to lock in your mindset and your vision. Okay, so we're going to end with that. We're going to go through the five steps that we're working on just and then answer anyone's questions that they have. Okay, so before we hear our story, who wants to unmute and just share what they're really excited about for this upcoming challenge? So feel free to like raise your hand. What if you can do that or just jump out and, and share? Hold on. Is this recording? Yeah, it is. I think it is. Yeah. Who wants to share? What are they excited about? Let's jump out. I'll start if, oh, go ahead, yeah, Patty. Go for it, Patty. Yeah. Who is that, Patty? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. What are you excited, excited about? No? We can't hear you. Okay, Tanya. All right, I will. Um, I, um, I'm super excited about being in the community, being engaged and making the changes. I've been, as you know, on this roller coaster um, for a few years now, like just trying to get change into that positive. And I start and I stop and I start and I stop and I start and I stop. And it's just yo-yo roller coaster. Um, it's been insane. Um, I gave up alcohol January 1st. It wasn't um, a New Year's resolution. It just happened to be the day. And um, so I've been feeling a lot of stuff since then. And um, I'm really ready to start healing from the inside out and, and moving forward as the woman I know I can be. I, I want to be... I want to be that woman that was in the pictures, but like I said, that 56 year old version of being on the right path, doing the right things, looking good, feeling good. And yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Mm. 
Awesome. Well, let's type some encouragement in the chat for, for Tanya. Like that takes a lot of courage and, you know, I, I hope Lynn Day, I know you went through a similar journey and, and you had to make that decision too. And, yeah. and look where you are at 63. Do you want to add anything to that, Lynn? Am I, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. <laughs> I'm sitting in my Jeep, friends. So <laughs> I just got so back. Cool. Sick trip. Driving a Jeep in your 60s. I love it. God, off roading. Yeah, you know, I appreciate that in regards to alcohol. It, 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 and, and the thing is, is that you may fall off the wagon, and that's okay too. Just get back on again and uh, stay focused. Just know what the outcome is in the event you do start drinking again. Um, anybody that has the courage and the strength to stop drinking, I give 100% credit to, but you have to replace it with something. And doing this, you're going to feel like a hundred, a million bucks. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And you know, yep. I think Tanya brings up a good point. When we, we repress things, we're a culture of repression. We repress our feelings with our cell phones, with food, with uh, Netflix, um, alcohol, uh, cannabis, if you live in Canada. So, you know, work, whatever it is. So if we start to take away our coping strategies, you will start to feel things. And that's the whole point. We're going to take away emotional eating. We're going to take away some of these things and these feelings are going to come up. So, you know, that's where our journaling comes in. The meditation comes in. And so getting comfortable with that and, you know, a really good book, Tanya. And for those who are struggling with the all or nothing, or the extremes in this, a really good book recommendation is The Compound Effect. So if you haven't read that book or you don't have it on Audible, that would be a great book, okay? Because it really just talks about, and that's what we really want for all of you guys, is just taking a little baby step, but doing it consistently. You yeah. saw my pictures there. It was, I didn't see results of those muscles for a very long time. I saw them in my mind first and, um, I felt them, but it didn't show up for a long time. I mean, I would cry and I would say this, nothing is not working. Like I am busting my ass. I'm eating clean. Nothing is happening. And then one day it was just like a butterfly. It was just like, wow, you know? And so I know you might not believe it, but I believe enough for all of 73 of us that if you are consistent with eating healthy and taking care of your body and going to sleep and doing gratitude, you will see a significant change. Six weeks, maybe. Six months, absolutely, right? So, all right, well, let's kick it off right here and a big welcome to every, each and every single one of you that is here. I'm so proud to have 27 of us on here. I wanna bring out a girl that I just met, a, a beautiful woman. This is like the land of the legends. Like we have like Lynn Day there who's 63 and now we have Bo here and I just met her and she's super inspiring. So Lynn Robinson, I want you to introduce Bo to us because you guys are buds and I've heard such great things about her and she's part of our community. And so introduce Bo and then Bo's going to share her story because I think that she's super inspiring. So Lynn, unmute yourself there. Lynn Robinson, can you hear me? Oh, I don't know if she can. Uh, okay. She's maybe not hearing me. So I'm going to introduce Bo to you guys. So Bo, <laughs> I understand you are 63 years old. Is that correct? 64. 64. Holy moly, you guys. Come on. Bo is 64 years old. And where do you live? And tell us a little bit about your background before you get into your story. Sure. So um, I live in Toronto and um, I do interior design and just finished uh, um, restoring a hundred year old horse stable two years over the whole COVID time. A um, hundred year old horse stable into our retirement home out near Brockville. So that was challenging to say the least, but I, yeah, I do interior design. I'm an avid photographer and um, passionate about health. Cause I grew up with um, my mom who had thyroid and an older brother who had diabetes. So it was sort of constantly in our, our house, you know, nutrition, that kind of thing. So, mm. yeah. And tell us a little bit about your story of health and fitness. Um, so 
always been very like active and working out and that kind of thing. Um, I, you know, before I was introduced to isogenics, one of my main issues was I always had chronic digestive issues like bloating, heartburn, you know, kind of distended tummy. And even though I ate really, really clean, um, I don't know, it was just a, just my weak area, like, you know, not a headache person or chest colds or anything like that. It was always digestive for me, very affected by if I was upset, that's sort of where it responded was in my gut. So long before people were talking about gut and gut health, I just had a really touchy tummy and it was, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. And then you got introduced to isogenics. I saw how long have you been drinking our protein and, and, and cause I can see how much lean muscle you have. And that's just so impressive at 64. Yeah. So, um, so you want me to tell me my little kind of evolution? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so had, had the chronic digestive problems. Um, I was fortunate enough to be a stay at home mom. Um, but I had three kids in three years. And so they all went off to university very, um, close together. And then I was really looking for me, I was really looking for community. I didn't really have um, a weight problem. And I had had some girlfriends over for lunch. And one of them said something about isogenics. And I said, Oh, what's that? So she told me a bit. Um, I called her the next day, we talked a little bit more. And I said, Oh, it sounds fascinating. Like, are there any meetings or presentations or anything? And there happened to be one coming up that Saturday. So I went and I was so impressed with what people said about the sources. Oops. I muted um, that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So what I learned about the products, but also just the incredible feeling of, of positive energy and the desire to help other people lead healthy lives. I just said, like, I'm in. And that was about nine years ago. So I've been um, pretty consistent with the products there. I've uh, the healthiest I've ever been gut issues like disappeared. And um, I sort of I, I change up all the different shakes. But my favorite is just the Isoline Pro because it's so high in protein. And at 64, you know, the older you get, the harder it is to maintain muscle mass. But I honestly haven't worked out for two years because of my reno being so chaotic. And I've still maintained my muscle mass. Like, how does that happen? I, I, I yeah. yeah. And on the drinking note, um, I, st I quit for eight months, four years ago for my, like, it was a goal that I set when I turned 60, I was going to quit for eight months. It was really hard at first because my husband, you know, still um, drank and our social life didn't change. But when I got closer to the eight month goal mark, I just realized that alcohol was not serving me at all. And so it's been four and a quarter years now, not a drop. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Good for yeah, you. Everything's better. Life is way better on so many levels that I didn't even know about. Interesting. Okay. Well, here we go. We might end up with a lot more people giving up their alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a testament. And you know, I think um that's pretty impressive mm -hmm. what you're doing. And when I saw your picture, I was like, wow, there's a girl that has a lot of lean muscle. And and I'll say Bo this morning, like when I was in the gym and I was lifting, I was like, wow, like my muscle definition is right there and I haven't oh. lifted weights consistently in a couple years yeah. and I was like I can't believe it but I've been grinding on the Iceland Pro all summer so it definitely yeah. maintains your muscle doesn't it oh for sure I mean I've got two grandbabies now that are 40 pounds and they were just at the cottage two weeks ago and my granddaughter was sort of having a little tantrum moment and she was laying on the floor and I just bent down scooped her up lift her up on my arms carried her up the stairs to bed yeah. 40 pounds, like a non-issue. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Well, that's yeah. why we, <laughs> that's why we need our muscles at 64. Yes, right? I know. I you know. know. Yep. That's so awesome. Well, thank you for sharing and thanks for being a oh. part of our group, Bo. And um, it's really inspiring what you're doing and going down South. So we'll be following your, your journey. That's awesome. Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay, guys, well, um, let's go through um, and put some shout outs to, to Bo in the chat, you guys, like just say hello and, and, and thank you for sharing. Um, I wanted to just go through our steps that were, and just answer any questions that we're going to be doing. I know there were some questions about the protein and stuff like that. So, and then we'll get into our manifesting and our mindset piece. Um, so the very first thing, and I guess I could share my screen, but I hope you guys, and I'm going to get you to on your phone, hopefully you've saved 
the five steps that we're going to be working through, right? So the first one is prioritizing protein. So that's the number one step. So you're going to be um, consuming your Isoline Pro shakes, right? If you have our tri-release, which is another high protein, uh, pure protein, you can also use that, add that to, you know, whatever you need, or if you need an extra scoop, that's an amazing, it's three types of protein that releases over six hours. Um, now don't obsess about getting one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you can do 0.8, so like my ideal 51, I mean, in a perfect world, it would be 140 pounds, but I think if I can weigh 150 pounds at my age, that's pretty good. So 0.8 to one gram. So if your ideal body weight is 140 pounds, you could do 140 grams of protein. But if that seems like impossible for you, let's say you weigh 140, you multiply that times 0.8, and that would be 112 grams of protein in a day. And that's really doable when you get 72 grams out of your Isoline Pro shakes and you throw in a couple boiled eggs. My husband just made me smoked salmon jerky, you know, so that was my little snack just before I came on was I ate a bunch of um, salmon, right? So if you want to track your food, um, feel free to use something. Karen has a question. Yeah, unmute yourself, Karen. Who has a question about protein? I'll take them. So my question is just um, when we're looking at that, um, timesing it by 0 0.08, is that for like the weight that we want to end up yeah. at or is that our current weight? So if I want to be 140, then yeah, that's so, what I would. Okay. Yeah. So 140 times 0. 0.8 is 112 grams. So you want to be at like minimum 112 grams of protein, okay. right? Up to 140 grams of protein. Okay. okay. So okay. try to be in that window. And uh, guys, again, the compound effect, we don't want to create like we're all over for you, like enough with the dieting, right? But we do want to be in a window, right? If you want to track your food for the first week or two, just to get a ballpark of what you need, that would be perfect. So any more questions on the protein and the macros and, and the purpose of that? Yeah, Sharon, go ahead. Oh, unmute, yeah. Oh, you're muted, Sharon, so unmute yourself. You know where to do that, Sharon? Uh, bottom left of your screen, if you're on the computer, it looks like a microphone. I'm okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got it. Um, my question is more just the protein and putting it together, adding it up. Could you, I, I'm not used to eating that much food, okay? Mm. So what I was wondering is if, if I did the two Isoline Pro shakes and added Isoline Pro, a scoop of that to each shake, that would help me get a lot of my protein in, right? Yeah, so... And then the rest of it would be food. Yeah, so you could have like a, when you're cooking dinner, you know, focus on protein, right? Like if you mm -hmm. feel like you need a snack before bed, have a boiled egg, if you, you know, and so, yeah, if you do your two high protein shakes um, and you're saying you want to do a scoop of Isoline and a scoop of Isoline Pro, is that what you want yeah. to do? Well, no, I do the shake with the two, the regular shake for 36 grams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then add on, add a, a scoop of the Isopro. Oh, you, yeah, you could do that. Or you could, I don't think you need to add more Isopro to that meal. I, if you want to add some Isopro, take it before bed. That's a, as like you could take a scoop of Isopro after supper before you go to sleep. Yeah, um, like the belly buster. Yeah, great, great strategy for that's when we burn the most body fat, build muscle and our skin repairs is while we're sleeping. Okay. So if you got the munchies at night or you want to have a little something, take a scoop of tri-release or a scoop of Isopro, which is straight protein right before bed. Don't get your hopes up, guys. It's kind of watery. It's not as awesome as like a regular shake, but just down the hatcheroo, right? Yeah. And then go to bed. Yeah. And if you, I mean, don't overeat. If you're not hungry, 
you know, don't eat, but if you're focusing on protein as your main macro, okay? And then just test it out. Like if you went and did a lot of walking or you did weight training, um, you might be hungry, you might need more calories, okay? Days that you're laying low and you're more sedentary, just listen to your body on those days. Okay, Sally, unmute yourself, Sally. Thanks, Sharon. Hi, thanks. Um, I'm wondering how do I get enough protein in while keeping my calories sort of reasonable mm -hmm. and getting my vegetables in at the same time? Like I'm finding, um, I just don't know how to prioritize that. Yeah. If I'm just eating just protein, that's not enough for my body. Right? Yeah. So you're like, so what would a typical meal, like you could definitely have as many vegetables as you want, right? Like you can, you can eat as many vegetables as you want. If you want to have a big salad with, you want to have, you know, squash or you want to have vegetables, just go for it. You know, um, just focus on having protein with every, with every meal. Right. So I guess, do I not worry? Don't count calories. Don't worry about the calories because I mean, as I'm eating vegetables, like my plate normally is very full of vegetables and protein. That's it. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, what are your goals, Sally? Do you have fat loss as a goal? I would like to get leaner for sure. Um, I don't know if fat loss is exactly, um, I want to get healthy. I want my stomach to feel good. I want uh, to be lean. I want to have muscle mass. I don't yeah. want to lose any muscle mass, that sort of thing. And yeah, Bo, go for it. Do you want to add to that? Yeah. So I was just going to say, I find the easiest way, I don't really count calories, but if I had to guess, I probably have like 2,500 to 3,000 a day and I'm only five, four and 125 pounds. But I find the easiest way is like, I eat whatever vegetables I want in whatever quantity, whatever meats. Um, but I just don't really eat grains unless I really feel like them on the weekend. So I get a ton of volume and a ton of nutrients from the veggies, a lot of, um, a lot of protein. I don't really worry about, you know, fat. Um, and it just, I'm, it just keeps me really lean. And it's really the grains that are, that rack up the carbs that are empty and don't have the same nutrients as the veggies. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks, Bo. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really our focus is, you know, what, habits this is again little baby steps so what have you been habitually maybe eating that you could replace with a protein source instead right or is there something like we all know we have that little habit it doesn't seem like a big deal but when you do it over and over it does start to add up so taking out the grains or taking out that glass of wine that you have on the weekdays or whatever it is like those little things make a big difference and don't worry too much. This is going to be your experimental week. So ask questions in the group and it is per pound of ideal body weight. So if your ideal body weight is 140, it's up to 140 grams of protein or, or that times 0.8. Okay. Um, so let's just play around with that. I am in my fitness pal. I'm tracking just for the, the next week or so, just to keep things on board. Um, and now our next step, so once we prioritize our protein, is we are going to be doing daily physical activity. And so what we want to challenge you to do is walk 10,000 or more steps a day. So you guys decide what's doable for you. And uh, but 10,000 steps a day, weight training or body weight exercises three times a week. And the push-up challenge. So Lynn... Are you going to speak to the push-up challenge? And then I'll have Lynn Robinson talk about the weight training. Okay, Lynn, you're muted. Lynn Day. Lynn Day, you're muted. Hmm. Are we there? Yeah, there we go. There we are. It's just on something else. So let's scoot down. <clears throat> to the uh i'm just rolling because i don't have it in front of me because i'm in the truck here oh, i will share my screen and we'll go through the push-up challenge document okay sure <clears throat> the key thing is oh i've got it here in front of me thanks aaron um the key thing is in regards to safety uh you want to make sure uh, somebody had reached out saying about doing a push-up hurt their shoulders 
you've got to check your elbows. If your elbows are flared, you're at an odd angle where you're putting pressure right on the joint. And that's not what you want to do. You want to keep your elbows in close to your chest, into around your lats. Um, and shoulder width apart <clears throat> will give you a, a good push up. Um, so your lower back also, you don't want to hyperextend where it, where it drops down. You want to make sure you keep that nice and level. Right here, yeah. Now your shoulders and your neck, we have a tendency to go like this, if you can see me. Yeah. Uh, we tighten up. We don't want to do that. We want to try and keep our neck and our our shoulders as relaxed as we possibly can. And you'll find that also when you're lifting, possibly bench pressing, incline, decline. We have a tendency to tighten up our neck or our chest, uh, excuse me, our shoulders. You want to work at relaxing those so that you can focus on your shoulder that actually needs to be doing the bulk of the push, that in your lats. <clears throat> Another thing is your, your lats, which are your latissimus dorsi. And I'm going to take you, get an exercise here. If you would take your hand, for anybody that's wondering what that is, take your hand and lift your arm and run it right down beside your breast. Now you're on the side. All of that down through that side is your latissimus dorsi. And it comes all the way down. It, it engages with your obliques, internal, external, and comes around to your mid back. So you wanna make sure those are engaged. Your um, head and neck need to be raised, but they need to lead, but not tightened up. And of course your abs, need to be engaged in the in your glutes. We all know what our glutes are, which is our bum. So I just want to do a couple little exercises here. We're talking about your shoulder. Just take your hand, maybe your right hand and place it on your left shoulder, okay? Right here in the front, okay? That's the anterior part of your deltoid. Now run it right down through the side. That's the medial and then down through your back, that's the posterior. You wanna engage the entire deltoid when you are doing your push up. Another thing is your tricep. Now run your hand down to the back of your arm. That's where our wings are, that we always say we hate those wings. Your tricep is right inside there. And if you make a fist real hard, you can feel that tighten up. You feel it? and then let your hand go and tighten it back up again. That's your tricep. You need to engage your tricep. Now a little muscle that a lot of people aren't aware of, lift your arm back up again. <clears throat> it's right underneath your breast, along your side. It's about five ridges long. And if you tickle right in there, there there's a muscle and it's called your serratus anterior that needs to be engaged and that connects with your obliques your internal your external and that's your girdle right around and that if when you do your push-up and you follow the guidelines you're going to firm up your core your shoulders which is your deltoid you're going to firm up your tricep and make sure when you push up which is the positive your negative down you want to make sure that your glutes are engaged firm and you're going to find that you're going to tighten up your bum too. So there's your tips. Oh, that, gee. It all works. It all works together. I did not know I'm supposed to be squeezing my bum as I do in a push up. Who did not know that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can already but, tell that's going to be better. But you know what? That will, that counteracts a hyperextension. There you Tightening go. Your, up your abs keeping your bum tight, counteract your hyperextension. Because as soon as you hyperextend, you're now in for trouble with your back. So yeah. that's why on this document, there's four different forms of doing a push-up. Make sure you <clears throat> check the one that works for you. You ultimately want to work your way down to the floor, but you start against the wall. If this is new, then you start on your knees, then you go straight down with knees up 
and then you get funky by trying to bring one leg up at a time. I so love that's it. Where we're gonna start. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn's our wow. resident trainer there at 63, training for a fitness competition and a bodybuilding judge. She's amazing. So our push-up challenge is we want you to get down tonight or today if you haven't done it and see how many push-ups and pick whatever style fits you. If you're just starting, go against the, the you know, an incline or the whatever and see how many you can do. If you can do five, great. Tomorrow you do six. The next day you do seven. The next day you do eight. And that is the compound effect. Yeah. So by the end of our six weeks, you'll be doing 42 push-ups. So can you imagine? Now, if you're sore, do them in sets of 10. Get up in the morning, have a glass of water, do your 10, right? When you have your lunch just before, do your 10, right? So break it up during the day. I promise you, you guys, this is how you stay fit and healthy for life. It's the little tiny things that we do over and over, okay? Just a tip, <clears throat> a thought. When you do a push-up, it's equivalent to doing a bench press. And many women find it difficult to do a bench press because that bar alone is an Olympic bar, which weighs 45 pounds. So this way, you're already strengthening your core, you're strengthening your, your pecs, which is your chest muscles and your shoulders. Then if you decide to go into the gym and, and bench press, boom, you're 42 uh, push-ups ahead. Awesome. I love it. Okay. And for those who are, thank you, Lynn, so much. For those who don't have um, a trainer or a program they're following, Lynn Robinson, if you're available, on come out, but I think she's gone for whatever reason. I don't see her there. Um, she's going to be doing some weight training in our group. If you're available, Lynn, unmute and talk to us about what you're doing. Hi. Hi. Tell us what you're offering in our group for women. All right, hello everyone, I'm gonna go this way. So we're in the gym, can you see the gym? Yep. And uh, I've got Shelly and Lindsay and Lisa and Vicky just left. So we did a little bit of weights tonight uh, before we get together for the Zoom. And then we're all gonna start to push a count and take some photos and put it in group. Okay, awesome. Are you gonna be doing some weight training in our group? So what, to, what I'm looking for, and I'm going to chat with Lynn, is to do less cardio. So the 10,000 steps is fabulous, but for the rest of the six weeks, I'm not raising my heart rate too much. I'm working on lifting heavier weights. Uh, so and basic. So not getting all fancy, just going to do the basics, but really slow things down to take things up. And while we're adding all that lean muscle and our two shakes today, it's gonna be so easy to just create that lean muscle and to get strong. Absolutely, yes, thank you. And that's really, really important for you guys is that the focus for us is gonna be on our, our heavy weight lifting, okay? So find, um, either a trainer or a program on YouTube um, that you can follow, okay? And if you're, I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna move you in because there's feedback there. But I mean, if you are challenged and even at our Comox Rec Center, you know, there's, there's lots of like seniors that go that don't even lift weights, but they have the machines. And even just doing those machines, they're lettered, they're numbered in a row you know, do three sets, but push it enough so that you're really challenging your muscles. Okay. So you got to get into the heavyweight training. Now, one day a week, I'm going to challenge you to do a little hit workout and I'll put it in our group tomorrow using the Tabata Pro app. A Tabata is just, it's highly researched as one of the most effective ways to get your growth hormone up and we all want lots of growth hormone right because we're losing growth hormone as we age so like my warm-up today for my weights i think it took me eight minutes it was my the only cardio that i did i cycle as fast as i can for eight seconds and then i rest for 20 and then i cycle as fast as i can for eight seconds 
and then I rest for 20. And I, I'll put the app in our group. I do that about 10 times and it's not pretty. I have my head down, I'm kind of spitting, I'm kind of grunting, but it's only eight seconds, right? And what it's doing is it's dumping all the excess glycogen and everything. It's getting rid of all, burning through all those sugars in my blood and my liver. And then when I go and hit my weights, I'm ready to go. So if you have a site, a bike at home, that would be a great thing. You could also row. You could skip for eight seconds, right? You could do eight seconds of squats. It's highly researched. So eight seconds of intense, you know, <laughs> breathing, 20 seconds of rest, and then eight seconds again, 20 seconds and repeat that 10 times. Guys, it's been highly researched as one of the most efficient fat burning exercises that you can do. I do that in Bahamas on the beach. Yeah. Um, uh, a beach run every morning and just increase one more um, session every morning I do it. Or if, if I'm staying somewhere like renting a house somewhere when I travel, all you have to do is find a curb or a stair and go up and down on the stair. So even if there's nowhere to actually run because you're, you know, it's too built up or whatever, whatever. So it's, it's, it's easy, it's efficient, it's less impact on the body. Yeah, I love it. So the app is called Tabata Pro and you have to cycle through it. You've got to set the timers. Like I, and I'll send, put in a screenshot of what I do. It's a free app and it plays your music in the background. Okay. And <laughs> so if you can only do two rotations, that's fine. Then you go and do your workout or go do your walk or go do your pushups. If you did that Tabata once, twice, three times a week, and you did your walking and a little bit of pushups, man, you'd be further ahead, right? Than, than most people. All right. So any questions on that? I'll put that in the group. Personal development, guys, I hope you're reading a book, doing some meditating. Um, you know the drill, right? Do some journaling in the morning. Find a way to feed your brain something positive. Don't watch negative things. It brings your energy down. Like my daughter wants me to watch this Jeffrey Dahmer stuff. I'm like, no, I don't watch negative things. I mean, I would love to watch true crime, but the vibration of that stuff is just, it brings you down. So I try to put good things into my energy, good things into my mind. You know, listen to Joe Dispenza on YouTube. Um, listen to some audio books. Like I said, the compound effect or a great fiction or find something every day that's going to be positive for your brain. Um, yeah, it's called Tabata Timer Pro. I think that's what it is. It's kind of green and yellow. Um, I'll put a picture in there. Acts of kindness. Um, today, I, I kind of forgot about this until like I was getting ready for the call, the acts of kindness. So I'm going to, I sent a really nice loving text to someone today, but that's, that's kind of lame. I'm not going to like, I have to work on my acts of kindness. So I want to think about that, buying a coffee, doing a surprise, so let's think, did anyone do an act of kindness today? Anyone uh, do something kind? All right, well, we can all work on the acts of kindness then. So let's work on um, an act of kindness. And that act of kindness could just be, hey, Tanya, did you do an act of kindness today? Yeah, I did, I was just about to say, it wasn't initially on purpose. <laughs> But well, you're I, just um, so kind that of course you did. <laughs> it's funny. I I bought a um a gift card for a coworker for the keg and um had a bunch of flowers and I had my hands were really full and so I I set them on top of my car so I could get in the car with the flowers and, and they blew off the top of my car so I'm hoping that a homeless person found them. <laughs> because, oh. uh, anyway, it was just kind of a funny thing. But then I thought about it after and I was I was actually really happy that it happened because it wouldn't have struck me to just go give it away but actually once I realized that I had inadvertently just given it away it felt great yeah. <laughs> I love it it feels so good to give to others and it's like why do we restrict ourselves from that honestly yeah. like, to buy a coffee for the person behind you like hello that's so fun right yeah yeah so let's Let's get on that, you guys. Let's think of, and if you have done something kind, put it in the group to give us all ideas. Um, I know Ray Higdon used to say he would send pizzas to like the local fire hall <laughs> and do stuff like that. So you could even like, you know, do something really fun. Shelly, you unmuted. Do you have something to share? 
Oh, we can't hear you, Shelly. No. Okay. All right. Acts of kindness um, and drinking our water. So two liters of water a day, you guys get on top of your water and let's do it first thing in the morning because that's when your body is needing the water. So I hope you're on top of your water because your muscles will need it. Okay. All right, let's get into the mindset. By the way, we have some really cool stuff coming up next week. We've got some energy work coming up, like some really neat stuff. So right now, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to take you through a visualization because every single morning, as you're waking up in the morning, the most powerful thing that you can do when you are coming from waking up in the morning and falling asleep at night, at night is visualize and feel and see yourself in the place that you want to be. Now, I know this is sort of like, right now we're going to focus kind of on the physical, like that muscle, that, that mojo, that energy, and that's what we're going to go through with this exercise, okay? So this is um, my favorite guy, Fred Dodson, that you guys have heard me talk about before. Um, this is his number one manifesting tool after 30 years of working with the best of the best. And some of you have been through this, um, but I want you to just close your eyes for a second here. I was doing this for myself. Um, this is our scaling exercise. And I want you to think about where you are with your amount of lean muscle and your, your physicality, your energy, your mojo. I want you to think about that on a scale of one to 10 as if you were at a level five right now, okay? <clears throat> so right now you're at a level five and I just want you to get a feeling of where you are right now. Okay, so this is a level five and this is where you're at. I mean, you're probably okay with where you're at, but if you're like me, you're like, oh, I, I feel okay, but I, I don't feel the best, you know? Now I want you to make it a little bit worse, all right? I want you to talk, like think about your physique, your energy, your lifestyle a little bit worse than it is right now. So maybe you're staying up too late. Maybe you're you know, you're drinking too much alcohol, you're overeating, you're skipping the gym, you're laying around and get an image in your mind and a feeling in your body of what that would be like. And I want you to go to a level three now. Make it a little bit worse. What are you feeling? And what are you seeing? And what are you telling yourself when you wake up in the morning? You're at this level three and there's this heaviness. And we've, we're even going to go lower. We're at a level two. So, I mean, now you've gone to the depths here. You've just let yourself go. What, do you, what does your family think? What's happening in your business or your career? What's, what's the state of your home? How do you feel when you look in the mirror? How does that feel in your body? All right, I want you to jump to a level six. So it's a little bit better than where you are now. So it's a little bit better. You're feeling a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit more focused, a little bit leaner, stronger. What do you see? And how do you feel? What are you doing?
All right, I want you to go up to a level seven. So things are vibing and you are focused. And what are you seeing? And what does your morning look like? And how are you feeling when you look at yourself in the mirror? What are your friends and family saying? And what's happening in your life apart from this? Okay, and now we're at an eight. So you are on fire. Like your mojo is up there. Like you are just, you have this energy, you have this glow, you have this power, you have clarity and certainty. And how does that feel? What does your day look like? And how do you walk through the earth at a level eight? And how do you walk into your gym or how do you walk when you're out doing your thing? How do you move your body? And what are you most proud of? And what do you feel inside your body right now? Okay, take a deep breath. We're gonna go back down to a five to where we are right now. And how do you feel right now being at this five again? Does it feel any different? Let's go back up to a seven. And here's a question for you to write down. Why is it so easy for me to live at level seven? How come it's so easy for me to be at level seven? Okay, so I'd love to hear from you guys. What did you feel inside your body? And maybe this doesn't work. My husband TV was in the background. I apologize. What could you feel? Could you like, even me just saying this to you, I could feel the yuckiness of a four and a three, and I could feel the power of seven. Like I could see myself walking with power. I could feel that energy and I could feel the pride. Like that is manifesting. You feel it before it shows up mm. and so every morning after you say your prayers when you're lying in bed you brought yourself down to a three most people start their day at a three because they start worrying about shit before it even happens yeah. we're going to break that pattern you're going to start visualizing yourself as soon as you're aware of the seven see it Feel it inside your body and do it throughout the day. I mean, I, we have on here Karen Brodeur, who is an isobody finalist with me. I don't know about you, Karen, but like I used to vacuum and see it and feel it. And I used to, you know, visualize it when I would walk down the street with my dogs. I mean, I strutted. I didn't just walk my dogs like I owned it, you know. Like I walked as if I was there before I was there. I don't know, Karen, if you can relate to that, feel free to unmute. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it that served me really well. Um, I've done two fitness competitions and I'm a person who hid my body for most of my life. So the thought of getting on a stage with that, that tiny little bikini on after the age 50 was terrifying. <laughs> so that manifestation of seeing it, believing it, feeling that power and that confidence helped me make the right choices every single day to get there. Right. There was the terror, there was the, the fear of, <laughs> I don't want to go out there and not be ready, but there was also more powerful was picturing the success and how that would feel. Mm -hmm. so. It's more about the journey than the end result, right? Guys, this yes. is more about helping you feel really powerful and move really powerful than what it's going to look like on the outside, right? I mean, that's really a fun side note, but it's like the feeling. Did anyone experience a, that feeling? Can you, could you feel that seven? Could you feel the three? Um, and where have you been hanging out lately? Where's your emotional home been? You know, have you been hanging out? I've been hanging out at a four or five, which isn't bad. Like my five is pretty good. But today when I had my music on and I was, I put on my playlist and I was grinding the weights and I'm like, I was so joyful all day today because I'm happiest when I am at it. When I am have a goal, when I am focused, when I have clarity, when I know where I'm going, I feel the most joy. And, and I don't know why I've robbed myself of that lately, but you know, life happens. Did anyone else feel the six, the seven, the eight? Oh yeah. Monique, yeah, Lynn, anyone want to share what that experience was like? It's euphoric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who thinks that they're going to be able to put themselves into that state on their own? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. And that's called our scaling. Okay. So if you get up in the morning and you have a plan and you're supposed to go to the gym or you're going to do your push-ups and you're not feeling it, or you don't want to cook your dinner, or you don't want to go. If you do go to a gym, go to the gym, take a minute, sit down, take a deep breath and just ask yourself like, where am I right now on that scale? And sometimes we have to go down before we go up. So go down like, oh God, like, right? Because what if you don't do anything? Where are you going to be in four years, five years, 10 years? Bring yourself up in your mind to the five, to the six, the seven, see it, feel it. And then from that feeling state, now you're going to go take action. So that 2.0 version of you, right? That 2.0 version of Sue or Tanya or Wanda, what does that like? What does that woman do? They get up, they make a plan, they follow through on what they say, right? All right. So who's stoked to be practicing their scaling during the day? Woo! Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we are at um, time. This has been a long call. I'm really sorry. We'll try to keep these quicker. Who wants to share something that they're taking away from this call? Uh, uh, yeah, Lynn, go for it. Can I just add something in regards to yeah. our five responsibilities? Take a look at your schedule, Monday to Sunday. Check off all the oh the Did things that you accomplish then you add another week and another week and then this is how it becomes habit forming to make sure that each day you fulfill each of these uh, requirements for your success at the beginning of the week take a picture at the end of the week take another picture or at the beginning of the first week and the end of the last the sixth week but take a picture so that you have something to refer to so that you can see your success. You'll be amazed at how far you've come. I'm, but this little, this I'm little- I'm just pulling uh, up your calendar here, Lynn, for everyone yeah. if you guys don't have it. 
um, Lynn put in a calendar for us in the group that you can print off. Uh, it's in there. Yeah, it's uh, just just down below there a bit, but okay. it's in a PDF form. Or if you need it by email, let me have it. Uh, let's give it to me, and I'll send it over to you. But post it right on your wall, right in front of you, and tick it off each day. I did my act of kindness. There's Sue. <laughs> I got hers. Yeah, Sue. Yeah, good girl. So you just mark it off and you drank your water at the end of the day, mark it off. When you look at those seven days, it's like, wow, look at what I've accomplished for me. And this is what this is about. It's habit forming. It's changing those old habits. And it's really seeing how much you can accomplish at the end of the day. So good luck to everybody. I think we're going to have a ball at this. I love it. Try to check into the group, everybody, too, because it keeps you accountable. And yeah. if you had a bad day, it's okay. We get to start over here every day. We get to start over here every hour. There are no rules. So if you have a bad day, it's not the end of the world. And there's no such thing. We just start over. Okay? So good luck to everybody. Have an amazing night. Have a high-protein dinner. Have a good sleep. And who's got their steps tracking? Let's look at our steps. Who's got their steps going? Let's check them out. There is a little group of uh, people tracking their steps. Oh, let me see. My walk is just kicking in. Who's anyone else at 10,000? Yeah, oh, 10,423. <laughs> there we go. Anyone else hit their 10,000 yet? Janet, I hope you have. It's almost bedtime over there. Oh, she's looking. Uh, I still, I, 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 no. we were, Lynn and I were traveling all day, so I'm afraid I don't. Uh, my steps are nil today. All right. Uh, well, tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be at it. I'll have, the, I'll have the steps and the squats and everything. I'll be squatting with the kids tomorrow. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Sue Duda, you get your steps in today? Not yet. All right, tomorrow. Monique, what are you at there, girl? <laughs> I'm gonna need another 5,000, so I'm gonna go get off my ass and just go for a <laughs> ride, Charlie. It's, yeah, it, I think if you don't go on a specific walk, it's kind of hard to get 10,000. Like you legit, like, unless you're a waitress, you pretty much have to go for a walk to get your 10,000 in. Anyone else, Wanda, were you looking at your steps? Where are you at, girl? Did you get there? Yeah. Oh yeah, you got there. Yeah. 12,000. Whoa, A plus. Tanya? The, um, my app on the, um, on the, uh, the Apple Watch, it um, gives you, I have a 5.30 Zoom exercise class that I'm joining in on tonight, but um, it gives you an equivalent in steps. If you uh, get your exercise ring closed, it will um, it'll equiv equal your steps to what that would have been. So it'll close your ring. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Let's see, Heather's got her 8,400. She might have to take a quick little walk. <laughs> all rain at sue's place okay 30 minute peloton hey that's pretty good right as long as you guys are getting active that's what matters so have a good night and don't forget to visualize as you're falling asleep tonight see yourself exactly where you want to be okay awesome ladies um have a good night we'll see you tomorrow or we'll all see you tomorrow in the group and next monday on the call bye Thank you. Oh, night night eight thousand. yeah yeah okay bye Bye.